दुनिया जीवा से टप टप सेंड मनी ट्रांसफर हैज लॉन्च्ड इट्स ऐप इन केन्या सेंड मनी टू एम्पेसर एंड केन्यन बैंक अकाउंट्स सेंड मनी क्विकली एट द बेस्ट रेट हस्टल फ्री अवेलेबल इन द यूके फ्रांस इटली स्पेन नेदरलैंड्स बेल्जियम एंड जर्मनी टू मकी टू Jumbo 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 and a big big welcome to everyone who's watching in whatever corner of the world welcome to our talks hosted by our very own Victorian Katha and I Sharifa it's been a long time haven't seen you guys um but super excited for the conversation we're going to have today sponsored by our talks and tap up send money transfer um um i think you've seen the conversation that we're going to be having today we're going to be talking about perfectionism and the and the pressure that surrounds that and also with on this i think the the, the topic is so convenient because today we're talking about today's world mental health day and you know the we're trying to um the main theme is tools to be able to thrive with when you're going through mental health so welcome everybody to our talks and um yeah tune in call your friends tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend and i hope you enjoy please asking any questions head into facebook asking any question and yeah so the topic for today is the pressure for perfection i know we've gone through a lot over the past few months when we've been indoors i always make a joke and say the middle class has really strived during this lockdown but the pressure for perfection there's so much people are posting on social media i mean with with the media being able to allow us to send pictures to share video of ourselves there's so much pressure to be perfect have you ever just sat down and said oh maybe i need to do my hair like this because i need to look perfect maybe you started a new job and you know you're really struggling to fit in maybe you you're in school and you just want to show people that hey you know i got it or also you might just be in any environment where you just seeing people striving and thriving and you yourself are looking back and you're like oh my gosh am i perfect am i good enough and i think all of us go through that i've also gone through um pressure where i have to feel that i'm perfect um and 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 i don't know what does perfection perfection means different for all of us but for me perfection is all about portraying i don't think anyone is perfect as per se but i feel like perfection is more of a social construct that has been put in people's minds for them to show that they're actually better than others perfection is being able to speak right you look right you you know whatever hustle you're doing is going right for you your brain you know you have the most best ideas and and you feel like you're perfect and and unfortunately i don't think there is anyone who's perfect and even the bible talks about like none of us all of us are created in the image of god which is true and for me that is perfection however in the current society that we are we all have that one flaw that 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 doesn't allow us to be 100% perfect we're all struggling through different things emotional battles financial battles um social battles mental battles so it makes it so hard for us to be perfect and the idea you have to also know that the perfection is just an idea that was created by someone who probably felt that hey you know i can look a certain way or feel a certain way and it's kind of like a bit i don't know what um what you think but perfection is it can be quite intimidating when you see someone who you think you assume that they are perfect um there's this thing on social media that i usually see where it's an iceberg and it's water and it's a huge iceberg and you can only see the tip and you 90% of the times you will not see someone's journey or what they are hiding from you and you only get to see the bits that they to them that perceives as perfection so to me uh, perfection is just an ideology that really doesn't exist um if karibu sana tell us what, what 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 does perfection mean to you Ah, Vicky, karibu sana. The whole gang is here now. And we can talk about perfection. And mm-hmm. and I was just giving people an idea of what perfection means to me and that to me I don't think it's 100%. I don't think it's just more of an idea someone put there because they were intimidated. What does perfection mean to you? 
I think Eve is still having a delay. Eve is still having a delay. But good evening, everybody. My name is Victoria Nkata. Lovely Sharifa forgot to bring us on board. She was so intrigued with the topic. And she went through <laughs> and then she was like, you know what? We're we are just going on, right? Um, perfection, what does perfection mean to me? As um, <clears throat> Sharifa right, put, well, rightfully put it, is that it's this pressure of wanting to attain certain standards that are pro possibly very um irrational and also very uh unattainable so you want to be the perfect student with three days all together and you don't realize that you're not you're probably not that good at every single subject there we have strengths and we have weaknesses you want to be the perfect girlfriend or boyfriend by doing everything possible to make someone else happy but you don't realize that there are, there are places that you can be you can be messing up because we all have strengths and you all have weaknesses you want to be the perfect i don't know uh person basically all together however what we don't maximize or rather what we don't understand is that we all are flawed we all have our um imperfections and therefore we cannot attain perfection in totality and therefore for some people this brings a lot of issues in terms of their health and rightfully you put it in terms of our mental health a lot of it is usually caused by unreasonable standards that we set not only to ourselves but to to people and standards that we think that are set to us and with that said i'm going to bring in something later on as we continue discussing but i'd love to hear i just you. think vicky i think we should i should mention about perfectionism and mm -hmm. sometimes perfectionism is, is brought about by having feel that you need to be perfect mm -hmm. uh, but you know sometimes you can look at it in both ways you know sometimes for mental health it's good to believe that you know it's good to set a certain standard for yourself and mm -hmm. you know there's a way we affirm our decisions and say i am beautiful i am smart yeah. i am amazing and that's mm -hmm. positive perfectionism but then there's also the negative part where you know it yes. comes as a way it's it's a vanity where you know i'm the you know i'm perfect you can mm -hmm. you can be i can be corrected so i think it's mm -hmm. good to draw the line and understand there's good there's positive and then there's a negative and it's how mm -hmm. we approach it and how sometimes it comes it rubs off on you mm -hmm. i want to so, hear yeah. if he is yeah. back too sure if he is back yeah then. Hi. Hi, oh, everyone. My name is Eve. I hope you can hear me. Yes, you can hear you. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to agree with Sharifa. Yeah, there's a thin line be between... <laughs> there's a thin line between um, positive pressure to being perfect and the negative, and it, you... And we lost Eve it's very easy for you to fall um i will i would prefer like not using perfectionism but doing your best like we're having issues with you if the pressure to be in your best being the best version of it then you're limiting yourself because there will be limited uh you'll be limiting yourself uh to something specific and if you do something to perfection as you claim it is perfect you will find that you're not leaving any room for improvement at all. Love and that. I think that's, room for that's improvement. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most important things. And then I'm just going to quickly go on to question number two, where we asked that why are we so obsessed with the ideas of perfection, especially in our generation? You know, before the show, we were discussing this whole idea of other people living their best life while we're here struggling with 10 jobs and and looking at <laughs> looking at people who probably don't even go to work but they are just living and and mm. and yeah. whether that is your idea of perfectionism mm -hmm. um could be but then <clears throat> our society has taken to this image that perfection is having the best car having the best house and going out every weekend and having dress dressing in certain ways and also living on a certain standard of life that you can be able to go to Fairmont every weekend or live on Radisson every at, at every holiday that you want or Shangri-La 
and so on and so forth, right? This is the idea that has been set to us. And why are we so obsessed with it? Because nobody likes, doesn't like good things. There's nobody who doesn't like good things. And that's just a fact. There's no one who does not like the high end of life. There's nobody who doesn't, who, who despises being able to enjoy life on a certain standard. And I think that is one of the th reasons why people are I, obsessed with the idea of perfection. Nobody does not, there's nobody who's not um, happy about attaining high standards, not only morally, but financially, uh, spiritually for themselves. Everybody enjoys these things. And that's why I think a lot of us are about the idea of perfection. What do you think, Sharifa? Sharifa? Yeah. What do you think? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. One minute, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Are you there? Oh, you can hear me, yeah? Sorry, Great. my effort. Um, yeah, so I think, why are we obsessed with the ideas of perfection? Um, I think we're so obsessed because yeah. we live in a generation where, oh, sorry, am I the one speaking? Is Eve speaking? No, no, it was Eve who's speaking, and I think she has a little bit of uh, lag on her end. Or lag? Go on. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Eve has a lag. Eve has a lag. <laughs> Go on, Sharifa. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, I think we're so obsessed. One, I think social media has really played a huge role in mm -hmm. in you know in putting pressure on people on the idea of perfection. You see mm -hmm. now people are more people are we can post, you know, mm -hmm. what we can see, we can take videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 now what the world what the web has done, it's made us into one community and from that it's easy to access. So now comparison becomes such a huge thing where you start to see oh this person dresses like this or this person goes to work like this <clears throat> and that subconsciously we begin to put pressure on ourselves and then two i think we're so obsessed with 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 perfectionism in a way that i feel that perfectionism stems from insecurities so instead of us working on our insecurities and understanding how how our, our journeys are different we begin to start saying oh now i need to put pressure for myself now i need to work 80 hours a week now i need to 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 blow my credit card and, and get this and i need to hang out with x and o now we start to put pressure on ourselves because one we've seen on social media two we don't know how to work with our insecurities so now we we now we become so obsessed with it and then number three i think a lot of us are just living in denial we really don't want to accept our journeys we want to be live other people's journeys. We don't want to be patient, and 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 that's a challenge. I think it all stems down to who you are, what are your values, what do you stand for, what do you believe in. Because once you start to understand that, you won't put so much pressure on yourself. So I think that's what's going on in our generation. I'm gonna go into asking Eve the same question if she is still here with us. Hopefully, she's not lagging. Oh well, me. I'd like to add on that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Eve. Yeah, I'd like. Um, you see, like, um, we also, um, um, the generation. Uh, please uh, put the, the put the question. Uh, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you find you find that you find that um, sometimes we get pressure from even like our parents, like we find um, the generation that that is there, like your par uh, your parents uh, either put pressure on you or even their parenting style, like put pressure on you. So you, you grew up feeling like you have to um, match up to their expectations and it is them having admiration like they tell you like i would like you to become this i would like you to do this i'd like you to do things like this mm -hmm. so you grow up having that kind of pressure and you put it on yourself you know like it becomes your normal so even when you grow up even when you are um trying to do everything um everything maybe in, in school at work you're trying to do things according to the way 
um, you were taught to do them. And you find that um, you take it everywhere, even how you deal with other people, even you start putting the same kind of pressure on other people. And I think that's why we, we tend to be obsessed with the idea of perfectionism. And then another thing you find like, you see all the influencers, the movie stars and all that, they also, they also um, set standards on what, sh what is perfect, you know? And they set these standards and, and then it's according to them. We forget that it's according to them what they like, what they want. And then if anyone comes and say that um, whatever they're doing is wrong, they will uh, defend themselves and then they will bash you for not supporting their values and their beliefs. So we tend to take it like the gospel truth that that is what we should do. That is what, um, that's how we should live our lives. And at the end of the day, we forget that this is a person. This is a human being. This is a human being who has created their own standards and we, are supposed to create our own standards as well. I think if that's very interesting. I think as you are speaking, ask myself, who really sets these standards? Why do we put ourselves yeah. in a position of so much pressure over standards that people have set to themselves? And which mm. we have the power of agency to say, no, those are not the standards that I've set for myself. There's something also you've mentioned, values. I think it's very important for you to set your own values. I, we don't set mm -hmm. our own values. That's why you find ourselves being put in that, you know, conforming to other people's idea of, you know, perfectionism. This is great. And that is so true, Sharifa. You see, like, even how you mentioned, like, most of this um, perfectionism, like, it's based on people's insecurities, you know. So that person set that standard based on their insecurities, Maybe you don't even have the same insecurity as them. Lakini, you will use it um, as a standard for yourself, forgetting that this is a human being. This is someone who has their own experience in life. They have gone through different things with you uh, than you, you know. And you are following what they are doing. You're following what they are saying. As the gospel truth, at the end of the day, you're supposed to uh, set your own standards and then not too high, you know, like not to the point of putting so much pressure on yourself mm -hmm. that you don't give any room for improvement. You don't give any room for, for learning, you know, or even growth. Because at the end of the day, uh, we set goals, not as the end result, but as something, you know, like when you reach your goal, it gives you an opportunity to, to do more. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I think uh, that's where I probably would come in because I can see that someone is saying it would be good to bring in somebody who's experiencing the pressure and dealing it with uh, dealing with it differently. Uh, we all do. We all do. <laughs> we we, we, we say, are. We yeah. are. I had a walk. We are those night. people. <laughs> I, I definitely yeah. pressure. Yeah. And, and before I even go on, I'm just going to go in and explain to you the different types of perfectionism. And I love psychology daily. I love uh, reading psychology daily a lot. So um, if I quickly mm. go into the different types of perfectionism, you have the self-directed perfectionism where, as we're discussing, you don't necessarily care about what others might have to say about you and what you're achieving and your goals and so on and so forth. The thing is that you have Im <clears throat> impractical high standards. You have irrational, crazy high standards of what you, what you, or of your own, where you have set for yourself. And if you do not achieve these standards of perfection that you have for yourself, you get very frustrated at yourself. Let me explain to you something. Um, I do have this type of perfectionism, especially when it comes to my academics and my uh my work and career and so on and so forth if i do not achieve the things that i want to achieve and at times even with um situations like last time um there's a time where i experienced an accident and i couldn't i couldn't deal with it why because i felt that i am not supposed to have an accident i'm not supposed to you know i'm not supposed to uh, have certain things happen because of the fact that i I'm a perfect person. Victoria is perfect in terms of there is always supposed to be a certain um, standard for me because of who I 
believe I am and how I think I am. And therefore, why should I have accidents? Why should I fail in school? Why should I fail in, in life generally? And well, not failing in life as such, but in any aspect of my life. Yesterday we talked about compartmentalizing, compact, yeah, that one. Um, where you have a relationship, you have your education, you have, you know, these compartments that make you who you are. And when you fail at one or there's a problem in one where you feel that you're not meeting your own goals and standards, then it eventually becomes a problem for you as a whole and in totality. So that's number one. And for me, that's one that I resonate with a lot. Um, number two, you have the socially prescribed perfectionism, where you feel that Others set very, very high standards for you. And there are huge expectations towards who you are, how you perform, and so on and so forth. And so sometimes, well, quite often than not, this this is not true. It's it's a perception that you that you probably have in your mind about who you are. And because in the field that you are in, then you um, feel that there's a certain very high expectation towards who you should be and who you are. Let me take, for instance, Simone, ba Simone Biles and the fact that for her, she had to create that boundary in terms of, not Simone Biles, I think. Yes, it was Simone, the one who um, stepped out of the Olympics and, and a lot of people felt disappointed simply because they had this standard towards oh, her. Yeah and how she's supposed to um, to perform, mm -hmm. right? And these are the things, and if, if you look at her maybe, or if you talk to her and the mental health struggle that she had, she'd probably yeah. tell you that there have been some aspects of this that have contributed. Now, this is just an assumption. I'm not saying that this is factual, but if you probably mm -hmm. look at the statement that was set out or rather she put out there, um, it could be, that this contributed to her feeling some type of way. Well, in her case, there are some people who were disappointed, but it could also be um, very more than what it actually is. And it now breaks you and it feels that, or rather you end up feeling that you're not good enough or you're not um, getting to the people, rather you're not attaining the standards that have been set for you. So this is also another mm -hmm. aspect the second type of, of perfectionism number three we have the other oriented perfectionism so let's say for instance sharifa and eve are here and i set unrealistic standards to for them and how they perform so um and they do that for me as well or any any kind of way but the whole idea is the fact that you have unrealistic expectations towards how somebody else will perform mostly mm -hmm. this is really to some degree parent um parent oriented let's say a parent has an unrealistic standard towards um sorry i forgot to change this so we had the social prescribed perfectionism before and then now we have the other oriented perfectionism so you have parents who probably would have their kids ha meet certain re certain standards very very high standards you have teachers who would pro put um, unrealistic standards on the good students or either the A students and so on and so forth. Or generally, just if I say that, Eve, I expect you to do this, do that, do that, do that, then I'm setting some unrealistic standards probably because of how I work and how I do my thing, then I automatically expect you to have some level of keeping up and perfectionism towards how you also go through situations. So. These are the three types. So I'd like to know where my ladies um, feel that they that they can resonate. To which do you feel that you can resonate, Eve? Uh, Victoria, um, you said the self. Uh, you said it's called the self inflicted self no, self or self-directed perf perfectionism. Um, just reminded me something that I came across, and it's called the atelophobia. It is the phobia of imperfection or the, the phobia of making mistakes. And having a phobia, it means like it's an extreme and realistic fear of something. You And I want to point out that it's unrealistic, meaning that you feel as though there will be a repercussion out of it. But in the true sense, there is no repercussion. There is no real danger. There is no... like. 
what if you are if you have imperfections there is nothing bad will happen to you but you find these people have these unrealistic high standards and if they have a phobia of making any mistake so meaning if this person uh, makes any mistake um it really affects um them psychologically emotionally and they also get anxiety out of it it becomes an anxiety that um you don't want to do something because because you will fail at it you know if there's any chance that you will fail at something it makes you not want to do it and and it just reminded me and i, I thought i should share about now the, that kind of phobia and um brings us to the pressure of being perfect at the end of the day is there really perfectionism you know like is there perfection is perfection real yeah before you go into that because that's later on i want you to tell mm-hmm. us which one of them do you resonate with i like, guess it's, it's, i i said that yeah. for me it's mostly the self directed perfectionism where i don't necessarily and i have a little bit of the social prescribed perfectionism but it's not that i to be honest growing up i don't care uh, about what people have to what standards are set for me but for me it's more the standards that i have set for myself which are very high and and sometimes it frustrates me that some things don't go well so it really and it really can get to me so what what mm-hmm. about you um i guess it's the social one um and also the the first one because i for the longest time i guess i've shared this before uh, for the longest time i was a people pleaser like i wanted to do things that make everyone feel okay you know and that would mean neglecting my needs not doing what i need to do um to further my goals or even like um work towards my goals and the moment i i discovered that i had to let go of that and i realized that i was driven by the socially prescribed perfectionism like i don't want to do something or i have to procrastinate um a lot because i don't want to do something and then it will end up not pleasing maybe my parents or my friends or you know like and especially as an artist like i don't want to sing and then end up not matching the akina riana you know like akina beyonce am i going to match up to their standards is my voice good enough um am my dancing still good wait, enough wait, you know let me expose you a little bit you know <laughs> when i met eve you know eve came and told me listen victoria i i to me i feel that at this age that i'm in i should have been at the level of it this is what this lady told me she said i should have been at the level of the him and it frustrates me that i'm not and and that is <laughs> generally the i think it was one of the first conversations i had with eve and she told me that i don't feel like my life is going out because at the age that i'm at <laughs> now i feel that i should have been you know rihanna beyonce level and to me that spoke so much confidence and also spoke so much the, I was like, oh my lord, little girl, girl. <laughs> Because of the fact that the resources that have been set and you see right now she's stating that it was very much um pressured from the other side or attaining that kind of perfectionism from a point of yeah. family, a point in family. So I found it very very interesting now that you're even saying it now I had to explain. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh well i came to realize that when you are driven by uh, other people like whether they'll be okay with what you're doing you will be forced to you know set back like i don't want to ex- i don't want to sing because i don't want i don't know whether i'm good enough you know i don't know whether it's good enough i don't know even like how i behave is it okay for the society how will they take me am i going to be socially acceptable and i found that i will withdraw or i will procrastinate my work because i don't want i don't want to expose myself i don't want them to judge me too harshly at the end of the day i came to realize um i don't have to be perfect you know like and then i will never be rihanna because there will never be any other rihanna in the world 
I am the angel, I am Eve. So I, there will never be any other version of Eve in this world. I may learn from Rihanna, but, yeah, I will learn from Rihanna, but I will be my own version. I will create my own art. I will create my own version of music, you know, uh, bringing out who I am as Eve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. Sharifa, which of the three perfectionism uh, or other types of perfectionism do you mostly resonate with? I know there can be a little bit of everything, but which one do you feel that rules your life? <laughs> I think when you were talking about all of them, what came into my head was I fit in all of them. Like literally, I fit into all of them. I mean, when I think it's a bit, I think it should be a bit frustrating. However, for me, the biggest one is I am my harshest critic. Like I direct, like I have, I have this vision of who Shebi is. And I have this vision of the road I'm supposed to, to follow, the path. And then on this, on this vision board and on this path, there are amazing people that I look up to. And then I start picking certain great aspects from all of them and constructing this chibi, yeah? So now when that chibi doesn't get to that point, I'm like, man, I should have said this. I should have said that. I look back and I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to have a perfect routine. And, and, and with subconsciously, I'm striving for perfectionism. Subconsciously, because for me, if there's one thing I've learned over the years is that I need to be true to myself and to my journey. And also, I thank God because <clears throat> I really am um, so God fearing. So every time I start to end with, when I start to look at someone and say, "Hey, why I like this person that they do this," I start to feel as if with that envy. So I always go back and check myself. But for me, I am my harshest critique, and I set for myself standards that I feel are attainable. But sometimes when I look at it, I'm like, "Are they really, really realistic?" <laughs> Uh, but it's work in progress. It's I, I think you saw my tweets today where I think unlearning stuff isn't easy and character de development isn't easy and perfectionism is, is one way of um, trying to address an issue. Um, the other thing is societal pressure. Like societal perfec perfectionism is something that one way or another, I find it, you know, I remember I've just been driving and then something just comes whoosh, like, for me, socially prescribed perfectionism is one of those things where I start to, I actually went through this bit where I necessarily used to feel that I couldn't speak out. So if you don't, I don't think you've noticed, but for some time I stopped talking about my challenges. And then because I used to feel that if I start talking about my challenges, so society will start to see like, oh, okay, so this girl is, this girl is weak, so we can attack her there. So for me, I never really talked about my issues. And also I feel like that's something that really influences people to think that you're perfect because we don't mm -hmm. talk about our struggles. So someone out there is thinking like, damn, this girl's got a perfect life. No, I don't. I literally cry. I break down. I go on my knees, I pray, I wake up the next day and I fight. So, so and, and I also want to say that there are some things that the society has, the things that are now become societal norms. For example, women stay in abusive relationships and keep quiet and don't talk about it because they need, they feel the pressure to have to show people that they are in a perfect relationship. Girl, stop. No, don't do that. You're killing yourself and you, you know, why are you allowing yourself to be perfect at the expense of your happiness? Just to show people that you're perfect. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk and talk and talk. But yeah, societal pressure for me, I've, I've generally felt all of those, but it's work in progress, as you said. It's something, I have a cold, guys, so Nita, some things would not come clearly. <laughs> so yeah, like I've felt every one of them, but I'm in a process, I'm in a group of young women or women like me, and we talk about these issues. I go for therapy, I speak mm -hmm. to, you know, people, share my issues, and then mm -hmm. remain true to my journey. And then so that I don't have to have this impact or pressure to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that sums that question up. And I think we'll go on to the next question. Eve? What are the uh, psychological and social effects of seeking perfection 
at the rate that we do. Hey, <laughs> we're, we're, hey. <laughs> hey. I think uh, let me just I let you that have one. this one. Let me have yeah. that one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mental health. Go ahead, you know, mama. It's mental health. It's it's Ooh. a day to empower ourselves with tools that can help us mm-hmm. go through with mental health. Mm-hmm. Can we just talk about the negative impact perfectionism has on our mental health oh. and our psychological and mental well-being? So Seeking perfection, one, it causes you anxiety. Where? You know, if you're talking about anxiety, and may think that, like, you are just panicking. You're like, am I going to win? Because you feel that if you're not, if you don't portray yourself in a certain way, you know, you start to be anxious. You can't really go in front of people. You can't really speak. The other thing is, it can lead you to depression. Me, I wouldn't lie. You will begin to withdraw from people. You will isolate yourself. You will not want to talk with people because you do not feel like you conform to this level that has been created by someone else. The other thing is, so I've talked about you will isolate yourself. Isolation leads to loneliness. You will not have, you will not have, your, your relationship will not be of quality because you will want to associate yourself with people who conform to that perfectionism. There is anxiety. You probably even want to go for your dreams. You like what well, me if I talk yeah. about all the psychological <laughs> and effects seeking perfection has anxiety, mm-hmm. depression, isolation. You know, like even people start to we have things like um is it things like bulimia or this eating disorders? Yeah, because the, you want to achieve disorders. a certain body, you yes. want to you want to use any other route, so you be like. I'm telling you, this thing is so perfectionism. The idea of perfectionism, the umbrella is so wide and the causes, it's like a whole windscreen. Me, for me, I think even if we begin to unpack it today, we won't finish. So for me, as I can say, is one that I've even experienced is anxiety. That's one of them. And then there's... uh, Okay. There's you you really begin to isolate yourself. Mm-hmm. You don't want to talk about things, you don't want to hang out with people because you feel like you need to be perfect for you to hang out with a certain group of people. And then the worst thing is there's this the law of vibration. And the law of vibration basically says the people who vibrate at a higher frequency are at a higher rate of succeeding in life. True. When you begin to isolate yourself, you start to vibrate at a low frequency. Yeah. And when you vibrate mm-hmm. at low frequency, that's those are things that lead to people deciding, you know what, I'm gonna pull the plant on my life. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's just all about sitting down and knowing yourself. So mm-hmm. I think I've delved deep into that one. Yeah, and I think also um the other thing I, I guess I've pointed it out that I've also experienced it is procrastination. You find that because you don't want to put out something because it's not perfect enough you will procrastinate doing doing what you what you're supposed to do you procrastinate your goals you procrastinate everything you're supposed to do and actually it's one of the highest uh, reasons as to why we procrastinate and the other one is that we tend to also inflict the kind of pressure that we feel upon ourselves to others you want other people to conform to your level of um, your high standards the standards that you have set for yourself you expect even other people to also conform to your standards. Uh, Victoria, what um, what are the psychological and uh, social effects of seeking perfectionism? I think one of the things that I can just jump into quickly is the fact that it leads to depression often, quite often. Um, mm-hmm. And that is something that people don't understand. Uh, perfectionism can lead to low self-worth it can lead to low self-esteem. And those are things that people do not uh, really take into consideration because once I don't feel that I am, as as Sharifa said, I have the perfect body, then I end up feeling points of depression. I end up not being confident in who I am or how I look. And therefore Mm -hmm. I now walk around with my head held low because rather Mm -hmm bowing down because I am not confident with myself. So that's low self-esteem and low self-worth. Now, it can also, sorry, low self-esteem in terms of how you look, low self-worth in terms of your capabilities and your abilities. So let's say that I cannot achieve the work or rather the things that I need to do in terms of work perfectly. I end up 
this or rather i end up not appreciating my abilities and my capabilities so i think that i'm not worthy of certain positions or i'm not worthy of certain promotions simply because i have a very high standard of who i think i am and what i think i should be and therefore every time and i think this is one of the things that i felt even while I'm working and so on and so forth, where I have this really, really unrealistic standard in terms of how my output should be in terms of work. And <clears throat> this in return now affects how I perform because when I perform, I feel that I'm not performing enough. And when I don't perform enough, then I put unnecessary pressure, which might end up breaking me and end up not making me do anything at all. Because in the strive of trying to seek better, I end up pushing myself to the edge. So um, I think in terms of the socials, um, Sharifa already said, isolating yourself. Um, you could also have social um, complexity in terms of interaction. Because now, if I don't feel that I'm worthy, that also now goes in turn to my friendships and my relationships. So in my relationships, I end up not, um, again, vibrating at a high frequency, right? I end up, yeah. end up not, not appreciating myself or my relationship because I feel that I am not good enough. I feel that I am not worthy. And I feel that there is a better girlfriend. There's a better boyfriend out there. There's a better situation out there that could potentially be that or rather somebody who could potentially be in my position and do it better. And therefore, and, and this is not attractive. Let me just say this. This is not attractive to anyone. Let's let, let me just say that. Um, being, being um, having low self-worth is not attractive to anyone and in turn can end up breaking relationships, right? And it can end up breaking even marriages or, or friendships. Because if I constantly come to Eve or Sharifa and I'm like, yo, babe, I don't feel that I'm pretty enough. Like, let's say we're going out and she's, I'm constantly talking down on myself because I feel that, hey, I'm not pretty enough. I feel that I don't have a good body. I feel that, okay, they, they will end up feeling as if I'm an energy vampire where I'm just, no, 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 no. She's bad energy. We don't want her around us. And that's just it. And this all comes in turn with, feeling this whole perfectionism and that's the extreme cases right and you can easily go on to the extreme case where you now instead of being perfect you're now going the opposite simply because you feel that you're not attaining these high standards and in turn you just affect your whole energy altogether so that's just what i feel um and then i think we should jump quickly jump into the next question sharifa Sherry, for you muted your mic, I can't unmute it. Oh, sorry, it's because of the flu. Um, I tend to blow my nose a lot. How do we learn to live with and appreciate our imperfections as we work on them? There's something I learned um, from J. Cole. There is beauty in imperfection. Like, have you ever sat down and seen someone who's done some abstract piece of work and you're like, and they're like, magnificento, bellissimo. And you're like, bro, what did you do there? I think we're all some work of art. Imagine yourself as some work of art or imagine yourself, you're in a journey that's a never ending journey to attain perfectionism. Or So for me, what I always do is that one, I heavily, I heavily consume content that allows me to appreciate myself and to appreciate my journey. One thing, I have, there's beauty in the struggle. I've, oh, I think I've been told Vicky that there's, I, I really love those stories where I'm not, it's not that I've romanticized struggle, but I've romanticized struggle mm -hmm. in the essence that you reap what you sow. So mm -hmm. I, actually I'm jumping the gun. One, I'm very, I really, really am prayerful. So mm -hmm. I usually tell God, you know, if I see something and I, I, I must, I must, I'm striving, you know, you can't be perfect. We mm -hmm. have to de be dependent on God for him to make us whole mm -hmm. and me i always feel like there's no day i'm ever gonna be whole mm -hmm. there's no day i'm ever be gonna be perfect but because mm -hmm. if i want to be perfect it means then mm -hmm. i do not need to depend on anyone mm -hmm. so that's number one mm -hmm. 
you learn you learn to tell god to fill the parts on you that you feel are imperfect mm -hmm. number two is learning life is always a learning curve begin to accept that i am not good at it but i am good at this once you accept you now start to work towards being better at something mm -hmm. so remember you you we're all not born being 100 knowing we have to work in progress to be able to so one two sorry is begin to to work on yourself begin to have these hard discussions and say hey i'm not 100 percent and number three, which is very important, is know who thy self is. Like, know who you are. Know who you are. Know that today I'm going to wake up. My nose is not going to be pointed. My forehead is not going to start from here. Girl, my forehead is not going to start here. <laughs> Some, let me, I'll be honest with you. There are hard things that I've had to, to there are hard pills that I've had to swallow. <clears throat> because in understanding who I truly am. And in understanding who I truly am, it's really empowered me. It's given me the proper tools to mm -hmm. be able to understand that I cannot be perfect. Mm -hmm. However, I can work on my strengths and even be able to be stronger. Not perfect, yes. but yes. stronger. Yes. So you start to tell yourself these affirmations. You know, you start to tell yourself, mm -hmm. okay, um, me one, I am a big girl. I am, and I love it. Me usually, by then I go to the gym because I just want a healthy, a healthy heart, period. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at myself and I'm like, oh, I am a work of art. And I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I And I don't conform to anyone's standard. Mm -hmm. Me, someone calls me a BBW. Hey, hey, hey honey, I know BBW. Like me, I just love myself the way you are. And love yourself the way you are every day. So you don't need to look. Set your own values and standards. And mm -hmm. then now you begin to love yourself and appreciate yourself. And you start to feel like, hey, I really don't need to be perfect. You know, I nowadays I'm and, and, and for perfectionism, I think for a lot of us, it me for me it becomes it when the standards that I've set for myself in terms of my career. Me, I tell myself there's a reason I was brought to this world. I'm never always gonna be so number or data oriented mm -hmm. and such like so uh mm -hmm. we need to use we're growing by forty six percent and, and we need to, to, to turn down the costs by twenty percent. No. I am not that is not my stronghold. However, I have learned that I am a people's person. Mm -hmm. And I have value to an organization because I can learn to talk to people. And that's mm -hmm. it. I'm not perfect. And you live by it. You live by it. There are days, some days you, someone, you'll see some babe and she'll say, oh, I just got an MBA from Oxford. Super excited. Oh, my God. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But I also have a degree from this other school. And you know what? It's accredited university. So I'm good. <laughs> so, you know, love yourself, appreciate yourself. And remember, your journey is unique. Mm -hmm. just the same way god created the head the neck the back the every part is important even this one eyelash mm -hmm. is important because this one eyelash if they're not there dust is going to enter your eye and you will not see anything mm -hmm. so start to see how you fit into this society and know that you're important so you mm -hmm. don't want to be a nose yet you're really an eyelash or you're really just a lip so i've said a lot of things but guys love your journey appreciate it and see yourself let you be your biggest mm -hmm. competitor so that you don't have to look at other people and say oh i need to be perfect and if you feel like hey you're going through this thing that you need to be perfect get on your knees and pray start talking to people you know engage with other people and also let me tell you if you need to delete social media if you need to block someone do it block your them. mental health comes Right. Exactly. If you want to take this question, I, okay. I, am, I am so sorry because of time. <laughs> so, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I was burning, like me. <laughs> anyway, no, 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 um, no, I think I think because we have uh, one more question. So yeah, so that one. You take this one, and then I'll take the last one, and then we 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 finalize on it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Great. Uh, Go on. Uh, do imperfections make us unique or are, are we often uh, complacent? Yeah, Sharifa, you, you're sitting beside <laughs> me. Sit it out. <laughs> sit, sit it out. Yeah, that is so true. And I love the fact that uh, Sharifa spoke about art. And as an artist, like I have learned, 
um there are often times whereby i am trying to paint something looking um like i'm a visual artist like i will try to be copying something drawing it and trying to make it look exactly as the other painter had done it and i will find that i will not do it exactly the way they did it but when i end up i look at the end results there will be who i am in my painting and it will be very different from the other one and that is what makes it beautiful because my idea of um or even how i mix my colors are different from what the other person was doing and i i find that i find out um at first i had an issue with that because i used to think that oh if i don't do it exactly as this painter means that i'm not good enough and all that and then later i came to realize that the beauty of my art is my own idea how i mix the paint what i was feeling because i realized that colors sometimes they are reflection of how we feel and it look at music how i write my music is very different from how someone else is going to write their music mm-hmm. it's a reflection of who we are from inside and it's the same thing like our imperfections um the things that we've gone through that we find uh, hard for other people like you think that it's not going to be good enough for the world it's not going to be good enough for um for for even myself those are the things that make us who we are i wouldn't be me i wouldn't be eve without without um i wouldn't write my music as eve and it wouldn't come out the way it does without my experiences or without even my failures without um the things that i've gone through and that is what i've come to realize and our imperfections um another thing like we tend to think um perfectionism is the right way but as i had pointed out is that it limits us you're limited to doing things until as in if you reach that goal then what if i reach that goal the perfect goal that i had i had placed then what will happen yeah i will not I will, there's no room for improvement i will not look at this thing and say oh my god i got another idea from this and i need to improve yeah we never we never think um or beyond beyond that um the end result yeah and then another thing is that like when we think about perfectionism like we often um i mean our imperfections that is when we think about our imperfections like that is wh- what makes us who we are you know like i wouldn't be eve without any of the experiences that i've had and for the longest time i thought that i thought that there was something wrong you know like i wanted my life to have been easier i, I thought that my life should have gone in a certain way like i, I had told victoria i hope i would have wished i would have wished to have got into a certain level in life you know but i came to realize that i was going through character development and for me to get to where i i, I ought to be i have to go through these things in life yeah i have to go through the failures the hardships the loss of friendships you know like um loss of family members you know like all these things have to happen so that i can i can become who i am and maybe you guys can you guys can uh chip in on this sharifa <laughs> victoria sharifa go on i saw you burning <laughs> no no i didn't burn i'm i'm just i'm sending love to her because today i talked about character development and mm-hmm. how it's very hard so i'm sending love to her mm-hmm. thank, thank you, you. just going to go into the next do you want to chip in on to the final oh sorry the the current question otherwise i'll go directly into the next question you can go to the next question okay great so <clears throat> um my final question is uh, can we be imperfect perfectly imperfect uh, sorry perfectly ah what, the, what what in god's name did we Uh, production rights what did production rights <laughs> and who can we be perfectly imperfect that is the goal to be perfectly imperfect we can be perfectly imperfect why because 
number one, as you have already heard from the others, our goals are not the same. Our ways of life are not the same. And in our imperfections, we end up becoming perfect and unique and who we should be, who we ought to be, who we are meant to be. We're not supposed to be like anyone else. I can never be Sharifa. I can never be as outspoken and as great in terms of sales and whatnot and marketing and so on and so forth as she can be. However, on the other hand, on the other end, she probably cannot do some of the things that I do um, perfectly. And in my imperfection, I am very perfect. I am who God called me to be in this earth and I'm who I am supposed to be on this earth. And I think that is what is the most important thing. Some things, some, sometimes we look at life and we look at who other people are. We look at who, how other people are doing their things. We look at how other people are, um, you know, watering their grass. And, and I think this really, really fits in into this conversation where you're thinking that um, maybe the grass has been on the other side, right? But then when you look at your own grass, you realize that there are patches of it that is green. So the fact that you're seeing somebody's backyard or you're seeing somebody's left side doesn't necessarily mean that their front yard is also as green. And I think this is one of the things that um, is very, very important for us to understand. Sometimes, um, sometimes, uh, sorry, I am a bit distracted because I'm trying to create some colors over here. So sometimes we often um, don't understand that every aspect of our lives falls perfectly into who we are meant to be. It falls perfectly into who we are supposed to be. And the fact that I am not doing well in my in my um, career doesn't mean that my relationship is not doing well. And I think this is the pressure that a lot of people usually have because we see that someone else is doing very, very well in terms of their career, but we often forget that they might not be doing well financially or in other aspects of their life. And I think those are the things that we need to look at. Maybe your desire might be a proper and a per perfect relationship, but then you're not looking at the other great things that are going well for you in your life. And therefore you're sticking to this whole idea of perfectionism where you're not accepting or rather appreciating where other areas of your life are going good. And I think this is very, very important to understand and very, very important to, to look at. So yes, we can be perfectly imperfect. I may not be the best, like Sharifa said, I may not have an MBA, but I definitely have some skill sets that could be potentially if not greater than as great because they fit into who I am meant to be and who I am supposed to be. Now, with that said, with that said, I want us to go into today and how, what today is. Today is World um, Mental Health Day. So we would like to wish every one of you a happy World mental health day and even in our discussion this is what i was doing clicking 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 and coloring and whatnot so <laughs> the color is green this is the ribbon color of world mental health day and i think um it's very important why because mental health is the essence and the core of who we are as people who we are as you know women as men as youth as ev everything that it makes up who we are is all about where we are at in terms of our mental health and our mental health definitely goes in and plays a huge role in terms of how productive we're going to be how fit we're going to be how well we're going to be how it plays so such a huge role our mental we always talk about how we are doing inside and i think one of the also amazing things that i really love doing is talking about um how we are up here and in here before talking about all the other aspects of life and with world mental health day we're seeing an increase in terms of negative mental health and this is something that we want to advocate a lot more for so that we can be able to bring people from a negative mental state to a positive mental state this is why we're having these discussions such as the whole aspect of perfectionism do not kill your mental health simply because you want to attain certain high standards that probably are unattainable be as it was stated before be very happy for who you are be very grateful for who you are love who you are that's where all positivity starts and it starts from up here if you whatever you make yourself believe in your thoughts whatever make you make yourself believe in terms of 
your heart and your mind it is what will manifest on in the world now if you make yourself believe that you're not good enough simply because there are certain high standards that you need to attain that are completely unattainable we're not talking about your goals we're talking about the standards that you set that are irrational towards um your capabilities and your abilities then you end up being in a negative state and this can be detrimental towards every aspect of your life and that is exactly what we do not want so as you are going home today look at the three aspects of um the three aspects of perfectionism that we've discussed think about why are you obsessed with with the idea of perfectionism what are the psychological and social factors that this has inflicted onto your life um how do we learn how can you learn in terms of the points that we've given to love yourself in totality and work out in your imperfections daily and look at how does your imperfections influence your life and how do they make you unique so look at the self-directed perfectionist perfectionism are you a person who has unrealistic standards towards yourself and how is this affecting you mentally look at the social prescribed perfectionism the, the things people say about you and where you're supposed to be in your goals. There are people who come at people and talk about how you're supposed to be married at 25 and to you, and you're looking at yourself, you're 27, you're thinking, what's, what's in God's name? And this is not an unrealistic high standard, but it's an unrealistic standard because of the fact that it caves who you are, cuts into your age probably. You're probably at the age of 28, and somebody is already telling you, of how you're late and placing certain values towards you that are not true and this is what we're talking about you and look at other oriented perfectionism where you think about how you view other people and how you treat other people as well so with that said i'm gonna just wish you a happy world mental health day sharifa eve please go on you know me i was gonna go straight and pay the bills you don't have to pay the bills <laughs> first so i don't know if i go i let Eve speak and then i'll finish by paying the bills <laughs> yeah i would like to also wish you a happy world mental health day and i would like to remind you that everything you think will end up being uh will end up uh being seen in what you do so it is important how you uh it's important what you think about it's important what you feed your mind with and it is important for you to take care of your men your mental health um, today, I was privileged to go and speak to uh, certain children from one of our parishes. And it was sad because, like, most of the questions that those kids wrote were, how do I cope with stress? What is stress? Um, you know, like, what is depression? How do I know that I'm going through depression? How do I deal with conflicts at home? It's sad because these are teenagers and they are going through all these stresses. How do I deal with the pressure of performing in school, examinations? And it's sad because, like, it just came to my realization. We think that it's only the grown-ups. Uh, we think that stress uh, is just for the people who are above 18. But in the true sense, our kids are going through stress. They are going through pressure. And it's pressure from the society pressure from home pressure that they have instilled in in themselves and i don't know whether we are the ones who are setting these uh, high standards for them are we the ones who are creating the pressure we need to think about that we also need to remember that these children are individuals just as we are just because a child uh, has the dna of the mother and the father and they have some similar characteristics. Doesn't mean that that child doesn't have their own personality. They are not themselves. And they go through life differently. They deal with situations differently. It is important to pay attention to our children. It is important for us to know what they're going through. And it is important for us to teach them how to communicate and how to be assertive so that so that they can be able to deal with the things that are going through in life. And with that said, I will I would like to wish you a happy World Mental Health Day. And I really hope that we are we become advocates for mental health. Okay guys, <clears throat> to wrap it up, I just want to say mental health is mental health has really become the center of our lives. Like Mental health is one thing that will affect your 
the functioning of your body, your mind, your emotions. So I think we need to really prioritize um, people's mental health. I think um, for when we were coming up with these conversations, I think for us, what stood out across the board was how can we begin to impact people to have a stronger and healthier mental health. So the more we talk about these things, it's not like we're perfect, but we hope that in sharing our day-to-day -day experiences, you can be able to, one, pick up and think how important it is for us and that you should also prioritize it. And also we want to create awareness so that you don't feel that you can't be able to talk about your mental health. So this year's um, theme was tools. <clears throat> One of the tools that really have an impact on our mental health is, you know, um, having quality relationships with your friends and your family that create an environment for you to be able to talk and share your mental experiences and your emotional experiences. Number two is there are people who have studied and have gone to school. Please reach out to them. If it's therapists, if it's counselors, please reach out. Sometimes you might not be able to know if you're going through a mental health, please. There are avenues that you can reach out. Um, Victoria has some avenues that you can reach out and you can start to self-evaluate yourself. I'm not telling you to go to web IMD. No, no, no. I'm not telling you that, but I'm not also discrediting it. But you guys, even if you feel you're starting to withdraw, please, let's talk about it. See someone, begin to talk to someone, get help. <clears throat> about perfectionism, I just want to say this, that um, sometimes we've really spoken about the victim, but we've not really talked about the perpetrators. And we sometimes are perpetrators. Yeah. I even was thinking, maybe through my Instagram post, I may have showed people that I'm perfect. And one way or another, I'm not, I'm not, I'm perpetrating perfectionism. We might have kids, siblings, um, you know, friends that we, that one way or another are feeling pressure about it. I know sometimes you can say, no, 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 but you know, it's up to them to know when to filter out. But also you are your brother's keeper. So begin to say, begin to, begin to create a balance in your life where if you can't tell people you're struggling, maze, don't post those perfect lives or don't talk about those perfect. Don't make life about you. You know, I, this might come at a bit negative, but I'm just trying to say that we are perpetrators and we don't know that. Actually, when, we were, when I was going through the topic, I was thinking about parents, teachers, uh, who tend to put pressure on kids that they need to, you know, and, and they don't know, they're actually making them want to feel like they're perfect. So let's also evaluate ourselves. And then <clears throat> to finish it off, guys, I just want to say love yourself, understand yourself, know your journey. Our journeys are very different. Yeah, to get to the finish line, you know, someone will, you know, I always imagine, I always tell people to get to uh, Mombasa, you know, you can decide to go to Lake Victoria, find a way through the seas and go to Mombasa. You can decide to use Mombasa Road. You Where wow. did Rifa disappear to? And the way I was listening to her, Mombasa Road. Yeah, I wanted her to finish the analogy of Mombasa Road. Yeah, and I know she also needs to bring us to Tap Tap. So what I'm going to yeah. do is I'm going to show you just a little bit about Tap Tap Send, where if you use the promo code AWE21, at AWE21, then you will be able to get, I think it's 10 pounds or 10 euro of your first send. Um, and you'll also get that to be able to send. So as Sharifa is coming back, I'm just going to quickly play the tap tap send video and then she's gonna come back and tell us about tap 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 send money transfer has launched its app in kenya send money to mpesa and kenyan bank accounts send money quickly at the best rate hustle free available in the uk france italy spain netherlands belgium and germany to monkey too Kitu and Sharifa is back. 
Hi guys, technology, technological issues, you guys. <laughs> anyway, just to wrap it up, um, I just want to talk about, I know a lot of our viewers are in the diaspora or they're also in Kenya and remittances plays a huge part in our economy. A lot of us that are watching send money back to Kenya or some of us receive money from people in the diaspora. So for those who are receiving money from people in the diaspora. I want to tell you there's an app that is called Tap Tap Send, and it's allowing people to receive money at no fee. So if you have your person who's in the diaspora and has been sending you money, they don't even need to use, they can use the bank, but tell them to use Tap Tap Send. It's a very great app. It's fast, it's reliable, it has no cost. And you know what? If you download the first time, you get a 10 pound, 10 euro, 10 dollar, for free. Now, if you're in the diaspora, if you're in the UK, if you're in France, if you're in Belgium, if you're in Italy, if you're in the Netherlands, if you're in Spain, Tap Tap is available to you. All you need to do is go to the App Store, download the app, put in your details, put the code AWAY21, and guess what? You're going to get 10, 10 pounds, 10 euros for free. Amazing news for our family and our viewers in America and Canada. TapTap Tap is available to you. Guys, what TapTap Tap is trying to do is, look, we're trying to make remittances reach accessible to every single migrant who's living in the diaspora. So you know what? Download. We are also working on projects that are empowering the community. Yesterday, I was thinking I'll be discussing this with a lot of people that for us, TapTap Tap is just not asking you to send money back home, but we're very key on developing Africa, in developing our continents back at home. With the remittances, for example, for Kenya, you're able, these Kenyans in the diaspora sent 4 billion US dollars last year. And this was in times of a pandemic. If you take that 4 billion and we actually sat down in the government and said, we can actually build roads, build schools, we create job opportunities for people. So download the app. It's very easy to use. Follow our Instagram page, follow our Facebook page. And you know what, guys? We're currently looking for Tap Tap Send ambassadors. And being part of the Tap Tap Send family is amazing. Like, let me tell you for sure. Like, you're, you're part of something. You're part, you're part of a project that is empowering society. So guys, download the app, you know, you get a 10 pounds bonus, $10. And if you refer your friends, you get $5, five pounds, five euros on your phone, free credit. So guys, tap, tap, send, tap, tap, me, chop, chop. You can send to M-Pesa or to bank accounts in Kenya. So guys, re that hassle, that hassle, tell your friends, if you're in Kenya, tell your family, your friends, your bootang, it's time to send money with tap, tap. If you're in the diaspora, please. And we're looking to spread far and wide, guys. So tap, tap, send has got you. Our 21 is the code for 10 pounds, 10 dollars, 10 euros. Thank you. And with that, we are wrapping up today's show. Thank you so much for everybody who joined. Thank you for joining the comment section. We didn't have a chance to go through them, but I highlighted on them. And most of the things that were being asked in the comment section, we were addressing. So thank you very much. My name is Victoria Katha, joined by the Angel Eve and Sharif Anandi. And we will see you next week Sunday. Actually, because of the fact that we did not do our show last Sunday, we will do two consecutive Sundays. So see you next Sunday on our topic. And God bless you. We love you. Have a great evening. Share the po uh, share that podcast. Share the broadcast. It's still available on YouTube, still available on Facebook. Join us next Sunday. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're having great conversations and we will see you next Sunday. Bye.